If you are automating your Airtable database and you're needing to update a record that already exists in your database, then this video is for you. We're going to be going into detail about how you build out this workflow in Zapier and Airtable so that when an external thing outside of your Airtable database happens, that you update the information in your Airtable database to reflect that change. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help businesses organize and automate their data using Airtable and Zapier solutions. As I mentioned in this video, we're going to be going into detail about how you can update an existing record in your Airtable database from some outside occurrence. So really quickly, we're going to jump into my screen here and I'm going to show you the question that came from one of our viewers. So real quick, thanks to Mark. And you'll see that he says that he's got a system that's mostly working. He uh, he has this uh, type form to MailChimp uh, to Airtable with all using Zapier, and it's working well, and it looks great. But the problem comes when he wants to, as part of this workflow, allow someone to sign up for Slack. And when they do, he wants to reflect whether they did that in Airtable or not. Okay, very common use case. As you see here in his example, he says the uh, user signs up, and all details get pushed to Airtable and they look amazing. And I would then like to know, did the user join the Slack group? And ideally add a check mark to a column named Slack. So Mark, thanks so much for the question. Let's jump into how this solution can work in, uh, in an Airtable database. So really quickly, you probably have something very similar to this. Now I'm sure your base is more complex as, is, as they are in most cases. In this case though, all we need to do is add a, a checkbox to this Slack column when we have verified that this user or this person has in fact joined that, right? So that's the external thing that needs to happen, external from Airtable. So outside outside of Airtable in Slack, something's going to happen. A, a new user will join. And once that occurs, then we need to add this checkbox. Okay. So let's jump into what that Airtable, uh, or rather that what that Zapier automation looks like. So this is going to be a three-step zap. The first step, uh, of course, is the trigger. That is the thing that sets it all into motion. And the trigger in this case is going to be that new user in Slack. Uh, so from a high level, I'll just go through this, and then we'll get into the nitty-gritty on each of these steps. So high level, the trigger is new user in Slack, new, new person joins. And then what we're going to do is use that email that they joined Slack with and we're going to look at the Airtable database and we're going to find where do they exist in our Airtable already. So we're looking for that email and we're trying to match it. So the email from Slack and the email address that's in Airtable, those are email is always, by the way, uh, a great key because it's always unique, right? So if we use it to match records, it's, it's always unique and, uh, and therefore keeps our systems flowing without, without much, uh, trouble. So once we find that record, then from there, what we're going to do is update the record that we found in our second step. So second step is finding that record. Third step is updating it with that checkbox. So let's get into the nitty gritty of what this looks like. All right. So jumping into the first part, then we have this, uh, the new user. And so in this example, you know, I'm, I'm just pulling from my own Slack and we've got a new user as the trigger type. Now you'll see that you've got a lot of different options. You even have some that you can uh, show here that aren't as common, but the one we're choosing here is the new user. So once there is a new user in that Slack group uh, and first joins the organization, that's going to trigger this. All right, so from there, we can continue, we can test out the connection, and then we can test the step. Now in this case, I've already set it up to be pulling in the information from, uh, from my actual uh, adding to my own space. Uh, and this is the email that we're going to be using. So this is the email that's given to us by Slack. Okay, we're going to take this record and continue. And now we're looking at the find a record. So in this step, we're saying, hey, inside of Airtable, we're going to look for a new, we're going to look for a record. So it's going to be your third option, not creating, not updating, not creating, but finding. First, we have to find it. So we're going to continue from here, test your connection with Airtable, of course. And then you're going to need to link it to the base. In this case, we're working in a base called update Airtable example. And, uh, and then you need to point it to the con, uh, to the table. 
In our case, in our example, we only have the one table, so no trouble there. And now here's where you need to match Slack's email to Airtable's email, right? So jump back into our Airtable and you'll see that we have uh, a field called email. Actually, to be more precise, we should make this an email field, not that it will matter for the sake of this example. Now, in this case, uh, I have a bunch of example emails that accompany some other records. And then, of course, I have my own email as well. And what I need to test in this automation is that Zapier can find my email and not accidentally add that Slack check to one of the fake records that I've created above. All right. And so what we're doing is we're saying this is the field in Airtable that we need to match to. If you get a little confused, you can see it says pick a field from the base to match against the search value. So the search value is what we're looking uh, is, is one half of the equation. And then the other half is matching that Airtable base. And that's the record here in email. So here we can drop down and we will actually see all of the different fields that are inside of our base. In this case, we want to match to that email field. And then here in the search value, this is where we are going to bring in the email data that came from step one. So you see how this is underneath step one. So this is coming from Slack, coming from the trigger. And this is the email that we pulled from there. Oh, we only need one of those. So let me get rid of the redundant one. And so we're matching email in it in Slack to email in Airtable. All right. We do not want to create a record if it doesn't exist in this case, but there are plenty of examples where you might want to create a new record in Airtable. All right. From here, we're going to continue and we're going to test this step. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and retest and fetch and continue. And what this is going to do is perform that function. It's looking at Airtable and it's trying to find a record that has that email address where uh, that matches the Slack email address. Now it says that it found it so we can view the record. And in here, this is the information in Airtable that's associated with the record it just found. And since that email address matches what we would have expected, looks like we're on the right track. So we can continue from here. All right, now the third and final step is going to be updating that record in Airtable. So in this step, we select update record as the action. And of course we test our connection, make sure it's all connected again. And we need to make sure that we're setting up to the same base, obviously, and the same table because we found the record here in step two and we need to make sure that we are now updating that same record. So again, point to the same base and the same table. And now it's going to ask you what record do you want to update? And you select the custom value parentheses advanced option there at the very bottom. And from there, what you'll tell it inside of the custom value for record ID is you tell it that you want to find this record right here from the ID that we pulled in that second step. So this record ID is metadata that is associated with this record. And that's what we want to use in order to make sure that we're updating the right record. We're going to update the record that we found here. All right. And in this case, all we want to do is add a checkbox to Slack. Well, uh, it's this Slack option, let's go back into our example is a checkbox. It's a Boolean. So it's either zero or one and one being check zero being nothing. And so in this case, what we want to do is tell it, well, we want to update Slack with a one that is a check. So we can go ahead and continue here and let's go back in here and just make sure and verify that we have no, uh, no checkboxes in our, uh, in our example yet. Perfect. And so from here, we're going to go ahead and retest it. So we're going to test this step, send the test to Airtable. And once we do that, we can pop over here and we see that this was just updated with that checkbox in the appropriate uh, record. So again, high level, found a new user in Slack, found the record that was associated with that email address in Airtable, and then added a checkbox to the appropriate place. Now, it doesn't have to be a checkbox. It could be whatever you want it to be in terms of updating that Airtable data. But this is a really simple example that helps get the point across. So I hope that was super helpful. Definitely let me know what questions you might have in the, uh, in the discussion below. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there and we can set something up that works for both of us. 
What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.